Okay, in the last video, I left off telling you that I was not going to shell this geometry. Well, in case you do want to shell the geometry, I made this special video for that point. And the reason why you might want to shell a piece of geometry is there is an awful lot of volume here. And that can be pretty expensive to print, depending on your printing method. It also can be expensive to cast if you're using um, you know, fine metal as you're casting. So, this video here, I'm going to show you two different ways to shell. The first way is going to be in ZBrush. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to cut a little hole down here at the base of the ring and hollow out the inside. It'll do that automatically for us. I don't typically use that method because I don't like the kind of, um, well, I don't like the pattern that it leaves basically on the inside of the ring here. So I have my own way for doing it. And I'll show you that one afterwards. All right, so the, the first way to get started here is to go into your brush menu. And I'm just going to click on, I need basically to take one of the insert brushes. Doesn't matter which one, but in my case, I'm going to take the insert cube. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click and drag out the cube. Now, uh, when I do this, when I'm using a, a sort of an inverted brush like this or using the Alt key, um, the normals get inverted as well. So I just need to come down to Display Properties and Double. That way I can better see this. Now, another thing that we need to make sure of is that this cube penetrates far enough into the mesh here so that it will actually cut all the way through. I think it does at the moment. I am, however, going to go in and make a couple changes here real quick. I'm just going to rotate this cube slightly so it's more even. And let's just have a look around. The, um, the distance from the sides there, that's probably OK. That tolerance there is probably OK. And I believe that the cube is actually far enough in there that this will work. So. Um, Sometimes I end up having to use a lot more manipulations here, so we'll just, we'll just say I was lucky this time. Okay, um, you can also see that there's a little bit of a, a interpenetration here, so really, ideally, what I should do is go back and sculpt in this area a little bit more. But what I'm going to do for now, just for the sake of an example, is move the cube over so it doesn't interpenetrate that region, and we're just going to have this slightly off, um, you know, lopsided there. But well, this is just for the sake of example. You don't need to have a, a specific width or, um, or, or length in the cube. Uh, just a hole is fine enough, but it's usually better that there's some amount of space for any kind of um, residue that might be left inside here. For instance, if you're doing this with a powder printer, uh, the, there will be uncured powder inside here, and you need to be able to get it out, so you need a large enough hole. OK. Um, what we do next is come up to geometry and we're going to come down into the Dynamesh menu there's an option down here for create shell now I've put this at a thickness of 20 because I find that that works pretty well in this case so what I'm going to do is just hold down control and click and drag and that's going to clear the Dynamesh go back to draw real quick here um, and as soon as I cleared that Dynamesh now I can go to create shell Now this is going to take a little while because there's a lot of calculations being done in the background. Basically ZBrush is going in and trying to find where can it make a hole both here, cutting that out like a, like a subtraction, but then also trying to find where all the surface points match up at a uh, unit distance of about 20 and creating additional geometry in there while hollow hollowing out the rest. Now I find that this uh, method leaves something to be desired um, and needs a little bit of cleanup, but it's pretty fast and it's uh, pretty easy. What I mean by that is if you look on the inside here, you'll see that um, there's an awful lot of uh, stepping basically going on. Now for the most part that's not a big deal, but I'm more concerned with these areas here. So you could just go in with a smooth brush and just polish those out a bit, right? They come down pretty nicely. And that's probably good enough. So if that's all you need, great. Let's finish it off there. If you end up smoothing anything on the inside there, it's probably worthwhile to make sure that you turn on the um, auto masking uh, back face mask option. But uh, for the most part there, that could be done and you could export this out, export it out uh, as an OBJ or convert it to an STL, which is all well and good. Now that's not the method that I typically use. The method that I typically use involves um, going back into Maya for a second. So I'm just going to undo this, get back to a previous state. There we go, get rid of everything. 
And I am going to just pop on over to Maya real quick. And I have the ring, uh, the same ring right here. Now what I do, when I'm creating a, a ring, there's usually this sort of uh, circular kind of cutout here. Or I should say it's probably an ellipsoidal uh, kind of cutout here that is very common in a ring design. If you're wearing a ring, you take it off, you might see that there's actually some metal been cut out toward the top there. And that's to reduce the amount of metal required to make the ring without affecting um, more or less the quality of the ring. But I also, not only do I want to cut that nicely, which is quite different to the, uh, the big square hole that we had here, um, but I also want to uh, allow myself uh, the option of choosing how much metal I cut out of here because I don't necessarily want it to be uniformly thin. Uh, I don't want a uniformly thin shell everywhere because that may or may not cause the, um, the casting to um, flow properly or co cause me other issues. So these are all kind of considerations that a, a jeweler would have, which I don't expect necessarily any of the readers to have, but it's worth pointing out because if you want to do it this way, you can customize the shell more or less. And really what it is, I just take a, um, a polygon sphere and oh, that fits quite nicely in there, doesn't it? <laughs> um, I just flatten it down, basically. Because flattening this down, if I pull this up, and you kind of imagine this as a, as a subtraction boolean, that's going to cut out a pretty nice um, sort of uh, doming shape through here. Now, what I've done is I've actually, instead of showing you all of this, um, I've actually gone through and already, already created one of these. And it's just using um, vertex manipulation to create this shell. What does this shell look like on the inside? Well, if I bring this over here, you can see that basically what this is doing, or I'll bring it forward so it's a little bit easier to see. What this is doing is it's just cutting out areas um, much like a, a normal shell would, but I'm also kind of retaining some extra volume in some of these areas that I don't want to lose it in. And it's allowing me to really get the shape that I want here underneath the ring. So just going back into ZBrush real quick, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I can presume that you know how to model that and you can model it to your heart's content. I am just going to bring this into ZBrush and do a subtraction. So I'm going to go to import and let's go find the right file. And that one is our shell geo. I will divide this a little bit just so that it gives kind of a nicer result. It doesn't seem to change the shape here at all, so that's fine. That's something you need to pay attention to, making sure it doesn't change the shape. I'll delete any lower subdivision levels, and I'm just going to pop back over to the dragon head here. So I'm going to append this shell geo as a subtool. So I'll come down into the subtool menu and go to append, and we will select this shell geo. All right, so that sits in there nicely now. Now, if you haven't done this before, this is a really cool trick. So to Boolean subtract something, from a mesh. We need to come down into the subtool option that we want to actually subtract, in this case the shell geo, and we need to change this icon here which is uh, by default set to um, unify or add, and the next option over, we click on that, this is set to subtract now. So it's very important that we set this to subtract, but we also need to take another step, and this other step uh, comes under the polygroups menu. And the option that we would want to click on here is now to convert this to a DynaMesh sub material. So if we click on that, this will now get converted to a DynaMesh sub. You don't necessarily get any feedback in the viewport, um, but if you do click on it, that's what actually happens. There is a shortcut for that as well. Instead of having to go into that menu, the Control W key will do the same thing. Okay, so after we do that, now we need to come back up to the piece that we want to retain. Click on that. And we are going to need to merge all of these together. Now it's important to mention, um, before we get started here, that this piece of geometry actually needs to be a DynaMesh. Otherwise this won't work. All right. So we'll go down to the Merge Options, and we'll say Merge Down. This is just going to merge everything down the chain together into one piece. All right. So that's not completely done yet, so let's just clear that mask. And now it's going to go, let's just control click and drag, now it's going to go through and actually calculate this DynaMesh sub. And there it has gone. It's gone through and it's cut it out. And this is a this is much more similar to what we would normally expect for a ring, uh, the way that this looks inside here. So you can see it's quite different. 
Um, I still have been left with a couple holes here. I can easily touch those up with, with the Dynamesh. But the inside there is very nice and clean, and that's really what I want to do. It's really the kind of result that I want. So you might say, well, okay, how important is it really that I do this? Because that's just some extra steps. Well, it's as important as um, your wallet is to you, <laughs> I suppose. If I come in and I just pop on over to this notepad here, um, just taking, just using this one as an example, right? Where I've done my own custom shelling. The um, the shelled version here, the one that we see on the screen at the moment. Let's get that sort of lined up so we can better see it. Okay, this version here uh, has a when when you go to print it, I calculated this in my printing software. Uh, this has a volume of 1.6 milliliters in terms of material that my printer uses. Um, and the height is 33.3 millimeters. So what we do is we have a, a formula that we use that's based on the amount of material used, the volume of that material, and that has a particular price. And then we add to that uh, the amount of time that's involved because we can very uh, easily determine how long a print will take based on its height. So there's two factors in this formula and the result is in this case, this would cost $195. Now the unshelled version, the one that I did in the previous video where I did not take any part out of here, that's 2.03 mill milliliters in volume, same height. So the difference here in price, uh, now this is $227, the difference in price is 32 bucks. This is New Zealand dollars, um, which is a, you know, this is 16% more. Now that doesn't I mean that that actually does add up to quite a bit. I mean 32 bucks is 32 bucks. And you also need to factor in that if you are going to go and ha go ahead and get this cast, then you are not only paying for additional uh, print material that you don't need necessarily, but you will also be paying uh, again an extra price for the unshelled version when you are getting it cast in um, you know gold or silver or whatnot, and some of those things, some of those uh, metals are pretty expensive, and so you'll end up spending unnecessary amounts of money, and the ring will also be a lot heavier. Um, so this is already a pretty big ring, we don't want to make it heavier than it needs to be. So you know, in the end, the shelled version is really a good choice um, all the way around, and I gave you two options here for, for going about creating it. I think that should, for almost everyone, uh, provide a, a good solution. So thank you very much.